geography grade 8 chapter representation of geographical features hello students today we are going to be learning about topographical maps and settlements do you know topographical maps are used in defense mining fishing and even in urban planning with the help of grid we can pinpoint a particular place location in topographical maps and contours gives information about terrain settlements gives information on economic and cultural activities of a particular place so students let us learn these content with the help of ppt the earth is a huge planet with a varied relief features like mountains plateaus plains valleys rivers lakes seas and oceans due to enormous size and shape it is not possible to view the entire earth at the same time this difficulty has been resolved by using various models of the earth a map is defined as a representation of the earth surface or a part of it drawn to scale on a flat surface types of maps maps can be classified on the basis of their purpose and content and basis of their size on the basis of the purpose and content maps are further divided into political maps physical maps and thematic maps on the basis of the size maps can be classified into large scale and small scale maps large scale maps are further classified into topographical maps and cadastral maps small scale maps small scale maps are classified into wall maps and atlas maps maps like wall maps that we usually see in our classroom are small scale maps of a country or a continent topographical maps the term topography has been derived from two greek words topos meaning a place and grapho meaning to draw or depict topographical maps are prepared carefully with greater details after survey to show two types of features that is physical features and man made or cultural features in topographical maps exact location cannot be expressed accurately by the grids of latitude and longitude to overcome this difficulty a grid lines used to find the exact location of a place on a map in the grid reference the lines are numbered and represented in red the vertical lines are called eastings the vertical lines running from north to south the eastings increases in value eastward in the grid square in the image projected eastings increases numerically towards east as 41 42 43 44 45 the horizontal lines are called northings the horizontal lines running from east to west the northings increases in value towards north in the image we could see northings increases numerically towards north as 28293031322 the eastings and the northings cut across each other to form a grid while giving a grid reference eastings are always stated first followed by northings there are two types of grid reference four figured grid reference and six figured grid reference four figured grid reference the four figured grid reference is used to find out the location that lies within a particular square in the four figured reference the first two figures are the eastings and the last two figures are the northings as i stated eastings are always stated first while quoting a grid reference and followed by northings each grid square is drawn to the scale of 2 cm observe the given grid let us find out the four figure reference for the following perennial line 12 spot height and settlements we can say that the four figure grid reference of a line perennial well is 2447 next spot height 2148 
settlements 2, 3, 4, 6. Six figure grid reference. In six figure grid, the first three figures are the Eastings and the last three figures are the Northings. To get the six figure reference, divide the square into 10 equal parts vertically and then horizontally. You will now get the third figure in the Easting and the six figures in the Northing. Observe the given grid. We can say that six figure grid reference of isolated hut and triangle isolated hut 6 2 5 3 3 3 triangle 6 2 2 3 3 1 so students six figure reference helps in pinpointing a place or an object on the map interpretation of contours on a topographical sheet though several methods have been developed to depict the relief features on a map, contour is a standard method for the representing the relief on a topographical sheet. The contour lines are shown by brown color. Contour lines are imaginary lines joining places which have the same height above the mean sea level. The spacing of the contours determines the slope of the land. The rate of rise or a fall of terrain is known as a slope. If contours are drawn close together, they indicate steep slope. If contours are placed wide apart, they indicate gentle slope. All contour lines are marked with number indicating height above the mean sea level. Let us see how our landforms identified with the help of contours in the topographical maps. Plateau. A plateau is an uplifted area of land which have relatively steeper slopes on all sides and a flat top resembling a tableland. A top of a plateau is almost flat and there is absence of contour lines showing wide gap and we find contour lines are close to each other on all the sides. Hill. A hill is a landform that extends about the surrounding terrain. A conical hill or a mountain is shown on a map by drawing contours that are evenly spaced in the form of concentric circle and the value of contour increases towards the center. Ridge. A ridge is a long and a narrow highland sloping down towards at its side. A ridge could have a several peaks of different elevation. The contours of ridge are elongated and are spaced close to each other. Saddle. When there is a sudden depression between two peaks of a high elevation, a saddle is formed. A saddle is shown like an elongated hourglass. Curl. When the land has been cut between two streams in watershed, a curl is formed. A curl can be identified when there is a sudden drop in the height of the contours. Contour lines are less in curl as compared to other landforms. Pass. Passes are region of low-lying valleys between two high mountains or hills. A pass is indicated by the drop in the height of contours. Gap. A gap is a low-lying area where depression is formed due to the action of river or a glacier. Students, these are some of the major and minor landforms that can be represented by contours on topographical maps. Settlement. Settlements are group of people living together, usually in a town or a village. The size of the settlements depends on the facilities and infrastructure present in the area. Infrastructures like roads, railways, hospitals, police stations, rest houses, post office present in an area invite people to come and stay. Types of settlement. Settlement patterns can be broadly classified as Temporary and Permanent Settlement Temporary Settlement These settlements are built by people engaged in activities such as hunting, gathering, shifting, cultivation. In the urban area, these settlements are seen next to a construction site. Sometimes in the urban area, these settlements can become permanent settlements. In the rural area, 
these settlements keeps changing frequently according to change in seasons and living conditions permanent settlement in the permanent settlement people built permanent concrete houses permanent settlements will have a better and continuous flow of facilities such as adequate water electricity infrastructure like roads railways on the other hand on the topo sheet settlements can be of three different types nucleated settlement linear settlement and scattered settlement nucleated settlement in nucleated settlement buildings huts farms etc are clustered together around the center linear settlement linear settlements usually stretched out along the local road rivers canals or a railway line these settlements develop because of easy access to the road water etc scattered settlement these type of settlements are associated with high land and also with the large farms and sparse population scattered settlement is also known as dispersed settlement students it's important to know that settlement pattern of an area depicts lot about the development pattern of area so now we are able to differentiate between temporary and permanent settlements understand about nucleated linear and scattered settlement so students we have learnt about how topographical maps are a source of information and the relationship that exists between infrastructure and settlement